Tout de suite, on retrouve nos chercheurs allergiques au bien-être. We live in a society where we need to be productive and more importantly, we need to show that we are productive. At the same time, so many of the jobs we have are very, very abstract, very elusive, and we don't really know in what way they are productive. Up to 37% of all the jobs in the UK would be bullshit jobs. Jobs that aren't just meaningless for the person doing it, but a job that would be meaningless for the entire society. Now imagine that you need to be productive, and yet at the same time you have this job where you cannot show that you are productive. I think going to a gym would be one of the few places where hard work pays off. It is one of those ideas of the Protestant work ethic, which you cannot find anywhere apart from the gym. And new trends like the CrossFit gym, you go there, you work hard, you record all of your performances. You can catch you like a and then someone will show you the graph of how you get better and better and better. So it's like living inside a toothpaste commercial. What drives us to do this thing is three things. Fear, fear of death. So uh, you exercise and you eat healthily, which is very rational to try and stay alive as, as long as possible. So that's very natural. The second thing is the desire to be someone else. I think deep inside, most human beings have the fantasy or a wish to be someone else. And what all of this is promising is another self, a better version of yourself. Biggest Loser transformations have astonished and challenged a nation. I believe I can do anything I want. In 10 seasons, they've lost over 10 tons. The third thing is that this is something we do today because we have to. It is inscribed into the logic of late capitalism. We need to think about our bodies and ourselves as something that needs to be maximized financially, socially, and all the rest. This man is ill. Replace him. This kind of pursuit of wellness is this kind of pursuit of life. And the, the, the most troubling thing in some ways is that we live in a society which is kind of disowned or doesn't want to even think about or believe in death. So we've kind of completely disconnected ourselves from death. And as a result of this, if we then think about sort of one of the big kind of things in any, any national budget is uh, health spending, right? So 50% of health spending comes within the six month, last six months of life. And much of that is just simply people wanting to run away from death rather than actually solve an issue. So I have one colleague who put it, the best way to solve the national budget crisis is get people to, to, uh, to come to terms with death a little bit more.